In today's vlog, I'm going to be reading two of my most anticipated releases of 2024. I'll be reading The Gathering by C.J. Tudor and The Last Murder at the End of the World by Stuart Turton. These are two of my absolute favorite authors out there. I have been so eagerly anticipating their next releases. And so I will be taking you along in this journey with me reading both of the books in the vlog. The Gathering is a detective story set in Alaska and there are vampires. And The Last Murder at the End of the World is a sci-fi apocalyptic murder mystery story. started the gathering and I'm 100 pages into the story and I just feel like it's gonna fly by so quickly because I'm having such a good time with it. I am just a CJ Tudor girl. I love CJ Tudor's writing style. I love the concepts that she comes up with. I love how she executes her stories. I'm just a big fan, what can I say? So it's really not a huge surprise that I'm really enjoying it. I mean, I thought I was going to, but it's just nice to get that validation. The atmosphere is incredible in this book what it looks like on the cover is exactly what it feels like reading. And I think it helps that I have seen the latest season of True Detective, which is set in Alaska. This is set in Alaska and they have very similar vibes, but this one has vampires and I'm loving it. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure before picking this book up if it was going to really be vampires or if it was going to be a more metaphorical vampire. I have been loosely kind of following what CJ Tudor has been talking about with this book coming out over the years that she's been working on it. She's been working on this one a long time from what I understand. And then she ended up writing A Sliver of Darkness, which was a short story collection in between the book releases because she wanted to spend more time on this one. And she was also posting on her Instagram that she took a research trip out to Alaska and was posting some like inspirational photos to tease leading up to the story. So I also just feel like I've been anticipating this for a long time, but also the scene has been set for me for a long time. So I already feel kind of attached to it in a way. I think that's why I'm having such a good experience, but I'm really loving it so far. What you're following in this story is this woman named Barbara, who is a forensic anthropologist, detective, doctor, lots of things. But she works for this organization where when there is an investigation going on around a killing, she goes out to help identify if a vampire is responsible for the killing or not, because in this world, vampires, they're real. Humans, they're real and they do not get along. There's been a long history between them. And there's this thing that the government can sanction when a vampire does commit a crime and kill a human called a culling, where then they go into these vampire colonies and they kill the vampires. So someone like Barbara comes in on the investigation to determine whether or not a vampire is responsible to allow that to happen or not. Because if a human just goes out and kills a vampire, they can be prosecuted for that. You can't just kill vampires and hunt them willy nilly. It's really cool the way she's setting up the story, the way she's setting up the world building and giving you just enough information about vampires and their relations between humans and just setting up some things that would make sense in real life. Barbara is now in Alaska and investigating because this boy named Marcus has been killed and everyone in the community thinks it was a vampire and they just want to kill the vampires, but they're doing things by the book. So Barbara has to come out and determine that first. There are some suspicious circumstances around this. And then also 25 years prior, a similar killing occurred that was ruled to be a vampire, but there's mysterious circumstances around that as well. And they may be connected. So you're following Barbara as she is going to this really small little town in Alaska, investigating the crime, talking to the people in the community and encountering a lot of hatred. I used to not be the biggest fan of detective books. I just didn't gravitate towards them, but I've been watching many, 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 many detective based shows in the last year or two. And so I feel like now I'm gravitating towards more detective books and I'm more comfortable in detective POVs. It is important to me that if I'm reading a book with a detective or if I'm watching a show with a detective, that the detective is a real character and not just a POV that you're getting for no reason. That's just kind of like carrying the details of the case. I really want to know the character that's a detective. And with Barbara being the main character, you're getting to know a whole lot about her being in her head, seeing her perspective on things. So that's working out great for me. The atmosphere is great. The writing is great. All the characters feel so real. It just, everything feels so real and I'm just loving it. I'm really pulled into the story. 
story. I have some ideas of what I think could be going on, but there's also some things that I have no idea what's going on. Like there's this one POV that you get interspersed every so often, and they're just little tiny portions. And it's coming from the perspective of a girl who's being held captive. And I have no idea what's going on there. So it's a good balance of I'm following in the story, I'm following all the characters and following the investigation, but there's also some things that are just so mysterious to me that I have no idea what's gonna happen with them. All in all, a great time so far. I'm excited to keep reading and keep you posted on how it's going. midway. I do not actually have a ton to say because I'm still enjoying it. It is in this portion of the book sort of just gathering clues, following the trail. I rechecked the synopsis and I noticed the way I set up the characters who were going to mainly be involved. And it takes a while for one of the characters to get involved. So it says the detective Barbara ends up pairing with this guy who was the former sheriff, Jensen Tucker. But when the book begins, she's with the current sheriff. And I was like, how are we gonna involve former? Sheriff, and now I see how it's all coming together. So she has a new companion that is working with her to try to solve what's going on. They're following the trail of clues. They're encountering some things. They're learning some things. It's just like developing as a detective mystery typically does. I feel pretty similar to how I felt in the beginning. I still really like it. Still really like the atmosphere. I do think a complaint people could have about this and that I've heard people complain about before with CJ Tudor's books is there's a lot of characters in it, but I'm a girl who takes a list of all my character names names and any defining attributes. And some of these characters are not as major, but because there's so many names mentioned and clues that follow, sometimes you'll get another 50 pages in the book and they'll be like, oh, remember Jacob? And you have to be like, Jacob, okay, how is that connected? Especially because there was an incident that happened a long time ago in present day. So I just keep a list of all my character names. And then when something comes up, I just reference it. It's not like you're getting a lot of POVs in the book. So I think that helps too. It's just like a small town murder mystery where there's a lot of people who could be involved and we're just tracing the clues. So not the most exciting update, but my opinion hasn't changed or anything. I'm just still following along in the story. I feel like this has the potential to be a five star, but I always fear saying that because what if it's not now? <laughs> I don't wanna jinx anything, but it feels like at this part that it could be a five star. We still do have quite a ways to go though, but I would be surprised if it was below a four based on how much I've been enjoying at this point. Very curious to see how things are gonna come together because I don't really have a major suspicion of what I think is gonna happen. And usually in small town murder mysteries, there's a lot of different connections and pieces that you have to put together. So it's a little harder to predict it. So still going good. I'm gonna finish the book out tonight and then let you know my final thoughts. I finished The Gathering last night and unfortunately it was not a five star, but I did still enjoy this one. The beginning really was a five star. I really loved the setup of this. The first half of this book was perfect. Where it built to was a little bit disappointing for me, especially the way it ends. If the first half was a five star, I would say the second half was like a 3.5-ish star. I do feel like the ending is weighted a little more heavily in my rating of a mystery thriller book uh, because I'm looking for satisfaction. So I'm going to give this a very particular 3.75 because it just doesn't quite feel like a four star to me, but it feels a little bit more than a 3.5. And I'm being so particular on my rating because I have read everything that CJ Tudor has written and I've given some of her books 3.5 stars before and this is better than those to me. So I just need to be able to have some kind of stack ranking. <laughs> For such a big buildup, the ending did feel a little underwhelming to me, the explanation for what was going on. It was kind of unsatisfying. And then this book kind of ends on a note where it could be easily setting up a sequel, which would be really interesting because CJ Tudor has not yet written a sequel to one of her books. If a sequel were to come out for this, I would definitely read it just because I have read everything from CJ Tudor. I don't feel like this is the type of book that needs a sequel, but it could be the start of a detective series, I suppose. Anyways, in general, what I liked about this one, I thought the atmosphere was great. I think the detective POV, the main character being a detective, was done okay. I do wish we would have seen more to understand her character. Like you get these references, particularly to this one person in her past, and you do end up getting to understand that a little bit more, but the way the book 
ends at the very end leads you to believe that there's more to be established in that story and I think that would have been good to see for the detective main character in this book. It would have just been nice for her to be a little bit more of a well-rounded character. And then the other thing I have to say about her is a little bit spoilery, I guess. I do want to talk about this in spoilers a little bit because it's really hard to be vague about it. So if you want to skip the spoiler section before you go, I would say it was a good police procedural detective atmospheric book that borders on the lines sort of of thriller and horror like CJ Tudor usually does. The horror aspect being that there is a supernatural element with vampires in this book. And I like the way she did the vampires and what she did with that. I thought it was cool. So I would recommend it. It's not my new favorite of hers, but I did like it and I would recommend it. Now to talk in spoilers for a second. The reason I felt a little disappointed by the ending of this book is because it feels like the whole time Barbara is on this trail in this mindset of thinking that the murders are not due to a vampire. Like Barbara is determined to not just make a quick snap judgment and say like, oh, a vampire is doing these killings and order a cull. She's like, no, I'm gonna find the real perpetrator. And she's like, it's okay if it's a vampire, if it's a human, I just wanna know who the real perpetrator is. But it gives you the sense that this is all being staged and set up and the vampires aren't actually murdering anyone. That's gonna be a human and it's gonna be a whole thing. But then come to find out it was a vampire who was murdering people and the vampire's motive was just to cause chaos. They'd been around for a long time. They left, they came back, they were living under a false identity and they they just said that they killed because that's what vampires do. Vampires kill and they were trying to sow hatred and cause more of a divide between the humans and the vampires to initiate a gathering event, which also this book's called The Gathering. And the concept of The Gathering is that this thing happened a long time ago where humans and vampires came together and just fought each other because they were very opposed to each other. That's what a gathering event is. And so this vampire was killing to try to drive the divide between people in order to cause that. That never happens in this book though. And then I'm like, well, why did you name this The Gathering if there was no gathering in this book. And it just felt a little strange that you were led to feel like it wasn't going to be a vampire just being bad for the sake of being bad. And then it was a vampire just being bad for the sake of being bad. But then you also get the POV from a girl being held captive throughout the story and you don't know who that is. And I guess you come to assume, or I came to assume that it's Athelinda who is the main leader of the vampire colony that's nearby. And she is this young, blonde girl or white haired girl um, because vampires age really slowly. And if you're changed as a child, you like still are a child. And so it seems like you're reading Athelinda's origin story from where she's being held captive by someone and then someone helps her escape and then she kills these people. And even the way their conversations go after you find out that she escapes and kills someone, it seems like it's alluding to the fact that it's Athelinda. And then you get to the very end of the book and you find out, no, it was Colleen the Reverend. That was the perspective that you were seeing was her origin story. So she's a vampire. And then she leaves a note for the detective at the end and is like, yeah, I was being held in Oregon and maybe you wanna go there and like find some things out at some point. And then the very, very end, you get an epilogue, which is teasing a potential sequel, I guess, because now somewhere random, some kids were turned against their will went crazy, killed people, and then left this note about um, Barbara and have mercy or something. And mercy is the vampire that she knew from her childhood. And so you're like, what? What are we alluding to? Like, that sounds like a really interesting story because then the crimes that are happening personally involve the detective. And that's what I like to see in detective stories is when whatever's happening is personally colliding with the detective's life and their past and their mysteries as well. Cause it makes them more of a person in the story versus just an agent of uncovering the mystery for the reader, you know? So all in all the ending, I was just kind of like, what, why, why is it a vampire killer? It seems like it should be more complex than that. We were led to believe it was Athelinda's perspective and now Colleen was a vampire. Why, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> That's how I felt at the end. So I definitely would be interested in reading a sequel if it were to come out because it seems like it would explore the detective's personal life a little bit more. And then also like, what was going on with Colleen? And what did that have to do with anything? I don't know, just open more questions. It just felt a little strange. The ending felt a little strange and then it didn't match the vibe of what we were setting up, but I still enjoyed it. Still had a good time with it. Just some nitpicky things. started the last murder at the end of the world last night and I thought I would tell you about it while I'm making my breakfast. I got 46 pages into it so just barely started it but I did want to show you how gorgeous this book is with these sprayed edges. There's also a map on the inside 
And I really just love this coloring of the book being yellow with these big black letters. It's giving me Kill Bill vibes. I don't think this book's gonna be anything like Kill Bill, but I love Kill Bill, so I love the look of this. But I'll tell you about it while I'm making my bagel. I'm a big fan of blueberries, so I do blueberry bagels with blueberry cream cheese. It is the superior combination. So I'm a huge lover of Stuart Turton. I have given both of his books five stars. So I have some pretty high expectations going into this one. And what I love about Stuart Turton's books is there's always something a little bit different going on with them than your typical mystery thriller. And this one is interesting. So I was kind of confused when I was starting it and I was tempted to go and read the synopsis, but I was like, honestly, I'm going to have a better experience just being surprised with what this story is even going to become. So I don't even fully know what the concept of the book is yet, but I can tell you my first impressions of it. So it's called The Last Murder at the End of the World. It's set on this island and the context for the book is that the world has ended because all these years ago, one day this fog just started to descend. I think actually like holes opened in the earth first and then fog came out of the earth and it took a while for the fog to cover the entirety of the earth. And during that time, the world went to chaos, people started killing each other off and then the fog kills you if it hits you anyway. So it kills off a lot of people. And there was the scientist who is named Naima, I think is her name. Yeah, Naima, Naima Mandrapilius. And she is one of three scientists slash elders. But during this time when the world was ending, the scientist Naima was like, I'm gonna go off to this island and invite these people. And so somewhere between 100 to 200 people come to this island. And that's what you're following now all these years later is the descendants of the original scientists who went out to this island when the world was ending. And the vibes, the way they live is weird. There's some weird stuff, particularly, and I almost don't even know how to explain this, <laughs> but they have this like omnipresent God type of presence that's in all of their heads named Abby. And so the book sometimes is written in first person. I gotta make sure my bagel doesn't burn. Um, the book sometimes is written in first person and it's from Abby and she's talking to you, but she's also in their heads. It's weird. It's like immersive and weird. And it took me a minute to be like, what is this AI? What am I reading? And then it explains sort of, that is just this voice that's in all of their heads. So they are constantly under a sort of surveillance because this Abby character is in all of their heads. And so it can talk to them and it can like send messages between them and it can, I don't know, like tell them things. Also, it seems to like kind of control them in a way because they all have a curfew that is I think like 7 p.m. And you fall asleep at curfew. It's not like, oh, there's monitoring and they're gonna come by your door. It's like, no, seven o'clock hits and you're knocked out no matter where you are. And then they get woken up at the same time every day by this Abby in their head as well. And like I said, there's the elders. So Naima, Naima is the most beloved elder and she's like the teacher. So she teaches all the children and she's like 170 years old or something. And then there's two other elders, but they don't really connect as much with the community. And the main character that you're following in the story so far is this woman named Emery. And I have not gotten a sense of how old Emery is, but she's reading like someone in her 20s or 30s. And Emery is pretty much the only person who is skeptical about the community and the elders and asking questions rather than just letting life go on. So there's a lot of sci-fi, fantastical, magical, weird elements that are in here. Some are explained and some are not. That's what I mean by Stuart Turton always doing weird things in his books. There's always some kind of strangeness where it's not just your normal world, your normal mystery. It's really intriguing and really cool so far. I'm liking Emery as a character because she's so skeptical of everything around her. So as a reader being introduced to the world, it's nice to have a character who's skeptical and asking the questions so that you can learn things too. I don't know where it's going, but there's clearly some weird stuff going on because it starts with Naima, like the first little prologue is she's having a conversation with Abby in her head about this experiment that she has to launch and it could kill someone but it could save the rest of the world. And if it doesn't go well, the world's gonna end in 107 hours. So you are following the 107 hours during this time. I don't know what's gonna happen, but I am as intrigued as I could possibly be in a book. I love this setup so far. It's so weird, so unique and different from anything I've ever read before. And I'm loving it. And the bagel turned out great.
finished the last murder at the end of the world similar to the gathering i feel like i just didn't have a lot of substantial updates to give throughout the story so i decided to just finish it and then give you my final thoughts one thing i can say about this book which is what i was expecting is that it is utterly original this is a very original book that's what Stuart turton does he writes little weirdo books <laughs> that are standouts and unique and original so even if you don't necessarily enjoy the direction the story goes or the plot you have to at least give it some credit for being an original story which is always nice to come by and i did enjoy this one so the story does end up leaning much more heavily sci-fi dystopian apocalyptic sort of situation lots of sci-fi elements in this and there is a murder mystery but compared to his other two books, it feels a little less focused on the murder mystery. The murder mystery is the clear driving force of the plot, but I guess the sci-fi elements just seem to overshadow it about what it's talking about. There's a lot of existentialism in this book in terms of asking questions about what's worth saving in the world. Is humanity worth saving? What types of people are worth saving, if any at all? When you get to the end of the world, is it worth still trying to preserve anything at that point? And if so, what? So for me, that is what stood out more than the murder mystery. I was a little, I don't wanna say bored with the murder mystery because I wasn't bored, but because I. I'm here more for the murder mystery than the sci-fi. I was hoping for it to be a little more developed. I think you spend a lot of time in this book with one primary suspect that the book seems to be leading you to go to. And it would have been nice to be convinced more that other people could have been the suspects and to be tricked more and to have more shock factor in the story. Once everything's revealed in the end, it is complex in the explanation, but almost in a way so that it wasn't really a matter of being surprised by who did what. It was a matter of just following the complex threads of wait, so what happened and who did what because of why? And we had gone through so many theories at that point that it was a matter of like, is this a theory of someone could have done this or what like actually happened just laying out the groundwork for the actual story so if you're coming here for a murder mystery and especially if you've never read from sword turton before and you're looking for a murder mystery i feel like i would recommend starting with one of the other two books first if you're someone who really likes sci-fi dystopian type of stories then maybe this one's going to stand out more to you because of that element i did have a good time with this one i am giving it a four star but i do think it's a little bit high of a rating because I just already love Stuart Turton's books and I was like looking forward to this and I was really in it and I liked the unique world. I think if this was the first book I was picking up from him, my rating wouldn't be as high because another thing about this is I didn't feel like the characters were super duper developed in this. You know enough about who everyone is but I wasn't emotionally invested in these characters and I really like to be emotionally invested in my characters, especially if it's gonna be like an apocalyptic, oh my God, the world's gonna end type of story. I wanna really care about the people that I may or may not be losing by the end of the story. And some of the central characters to the story is a mother-daughter duo. And I love mother-daughter stories, but I wasn't super emotionally invested in these. So I do think more could have been done to build up their characters. Like I said, I think so much was just on the concept of the book, the existentialism of it, asking those questions about humanity, which I like that kind of stuff as well but I wish it would have been a little more balanced with moving the murder mystery in more interesting directions and developing the characters in different ways. But I liked it. I had fun with it. I liked the concept of it. And also this book kind of reminded me weirdly of the TV show. I think it's called Murder at the End of the World. It was on Hulu. I watched it when it came out a couple months ago. Eerily similar titles to this. And also weird that the book I read before this, The Gathering, reminded me so much of True Detective's latest season. And it's like these books had to have been being worked on before those TV shows came out. And you know how frustrated I would be if I were an author 
working on a book, there's nothing that you can do about it. But if you're an author working on a book, and you're like, oh, I love this concept, it's so original. And then before you can get through the whole publishing cycle and get it out, there's like a TV show that comes out with a very similar title and a kind of similar concept to it. Not that that Hulu show is like wildly popular, I don't believe, but it is weird. They have similar titles, some similar themes, and some similar elements sort of through them. I would either be frustrated or I would think that I can like read minds and I was somehow in the show writer's mind at the same time I was writing my book. <laughs> that would be really weird. Anyways, all in all, I liked it, but it is gonna be my least favorite store turn because the other two are five stars for me and this one is a four, but I'm definitely still looking forward to what he's doing next. He does talk in the back of this book, a little interview about what he's planning on doing next. And he says he really likes to switch it up a lot between each book, which he definitely does <laughs> if you look at everything he's written. And he says he's leaning more contemporary thriller for the next book. So that'll be interesting. Looking forward to seeing what that is. So that is a wrap on this reading vlog, reading two of my most anticipated releases of the year. Unfortunately, neither of them was a five star, but I did enjoy both of them. I'm always excited to have new books from these authors and I definitely will be checking out whatever they do next because I'm just a loyal fan at this point. Let me know down in the comments below if you have read either of these books and what you think about them or let me know if I convinced you to pick either of them up. But that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.